It is 1108 Mountain Time. It is 1108 Mountain Time. And the business meeting of the 76th West Coast Science Fantasy Conference will be in order. I am the chair, Kevin Stanwick. To my left is the deputy chair, Martin Pine, who will preside in any cases where uh, I am unable to preside for various reasons that we are very much hoping are not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> to my right is the secretary, Linda Denneroff. Hello. In the back corner of the room, Ms. Lisa Hay is our videographer. This meeting is being recorded. The recordings will be posted to YouTube, and as there is no official WesterCon YouTube channel, it will probably be posted on the YouTube channel of Kevin Stanley. So you, if you go looking for it, you will be subject to train videos and the like as well. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Scott Sanford for joining us impromptuly as our Sergeant at Arms and Door Warden. Necessary. <laughs> and a chair caddy. Uh, yes. Or a chair caddy, yes. So thank you. Um, the quorum for a Western Crown business meeting is 12 members of the society, uh, or any members of the society present uh, for site selection business. Is it 12? Yes. Yeah, yeah, but there's no society. Uh, of the organization. I, I, sorry, I was using Wispus terminology. They're, different dialects of the same language, and I sometimes make a mistake, yes. But in any event, 12 members. There is a quorum present. Yeah, we're good. All right. Um, go, the agenda is in, is the, starts on page nine of the, pace, of the paper document that includes the bylaws. Do you have a question? No, no, no. Oh, I thought you were, could I get a copy from? Are there any copies left? Yes, thank you. Okay. Well, there's some copies in the front, so. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, I'm going to go over the agenda so people understand what the things in here are. We are currently in item A. Item B, uh, item B committee reports will, uh, are, to my knowledge, is only site selection business. It says there are no active committees of the business meeting, but there's some ad hoc committees. I didn't know we needed an attendance sheet. I leave that up to the to the I secretary. Secretary moved. Um, <laughs> a moment then. Can we just do a roll call or? No, or it's, it's, a, no, it's just easier for everybody. I don't even have I don't even have a clipboard with me. I mean, here's a blank sheet of paper they can write on the write on on the back side of that. But you're going to have to deal with organizing. What what headings on it? I have a pen you can use. Of how you're going to write on it, I don't know. What I'll leave it up to you. Okay, thank you. Just a moment here. The uh, secretary is asking for it, uh, to have a dis uh, an attendance sheet uh, distributed. Lisa, is uh, you have the, the the audio meter? Am I projecting sufficiently to your knowledge? Thank you. Be aware that the microphone is sitting up there on top of the camera. So if you wish to address the meeting and the chair recognizes you, uh, please, if you would, please stand and talk to the room. Don't talk to me, even though you address the chair as Mr. Chair. Um, we are at item B, A, you're still working on that. Item B will be committee reports. Item C, pending bylaw amendments, are amendments to the Westercon bylaws that were adopted for the first time at last year's Westercon. They are up for ratification here. If they pass at this meeting, and they do have to pass exactly, they do not have, you cannot amend them unless you want to start the clock over on them again. If they are ratified here, they take effect at the end of this cluster con. Item E, way down on the end, would be, or D rather, would be any new business, including new amendments to the bylaws, should someone wish to make them. Well, if there are none, we will just go on through to announcements after which we will adjourn. There is no intention to have a meeting tomorrow. I'll put your name on. I got the front row. Sorry. Are there any questions about the agenda? Hearing none, we move into committee reports, which is site selection business. First is site selection business essentially left over from uh, last year's WesterCon, which established a small committee called the Caretaker Committee, who was charged to either run WesterCon 75, God forbid, 
uh, or find somebody, or seven, seven, I said 75, didn't I? 77, thought to, to run Westertron 77 ourselves, or find somebody to do it. Uh, the committee, after considering those, those groups that had expressed an interest, and discussing it with those people who continued to express an interest, awarded uh, the right to hold Westercon 77 to uh, BACON and their parent organization, and therefore next year's BACON will be Westercon 77. Thank you. Uh, no further action is needed by the business meeting. Our committee had unilateral right to do that. I was, the, I and Lisa were the agent. Now we move on to site selection business. Uh, Ms. Denneroff it was the site selection head, and you have a report. I do. So, um, the, uh, the 18 ballots were cast, all in person, and nine votes were needed to win. The results were, Bacon 2026 received 13 votes. None of the above received no, one. No, no, you're reading it wrong. Oh, none of the above, excuse me. None of the above. And then <laughs> both got one vote. I would hate to see that one. Uh, none of the above got two. Total with preference, therefore, was 17. Uh, nine was needed to elect. There was one no preference, and the total balance cast for 18. So Baycon 2026 has been awarded the 2027, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Western yes. Con. No. One year is 2026. 2026, Westercon, Westercon 78. Congratulations, Baycon. <laughs> Without objection, the meeting thanks the tellers for their efforts and instructs the tellers to destroy the ballots. <laughs> Hearing none, this meeting thanks the tellers for their work and instructs them to destroy the ballots. The results of the election are now official. I do not think anybody here will be surprised to learn that there is nobody from Bacon to address this meeting. Um, they are a little bit busy right now. Running Bacon. No uh, virtual presence? Me. No virtual presence, but I have been instructed by them to pass on some things. First of all, uh, we have already been selling on their behalf some, uh, conversions and new memberships to WesterCon 77, next year's Baycon slash WesterCon. Um, those, people, the, those people who voted have $20 credit toward the membership. Baycon is doing their early bird pricing that's good for about a week of $60. Later today, I will be sitting near the area where I've been sitting all weekend, near the site selection, and if you would like to buy a membership or convert your membership, see me there. Baycon does not generally sell memberships to more than one year in advance. They therefore are not in a position to sell attending memberships to their convention at this time. Therefore, on their behalf, I can sell new supporting memberships at $20, but I cannot sell attending memberships. This is one of the reasons that if you have an email address, we hope you get it, they will have to contact you, or you will have to contact them to find out what is going on. Uh, Mr. Dashoff. Uh, question for the chair, could, or a request. Could you please be more specific when referring to BACON to which BACON? Sorry. BACON 2026, WesterCon 78. There is no way to sell an attending membership to their convention. They do not have it set up yet. We can sell supporting memberships to that convention, but not attend. So I want my pen back eventually. <laughs> it is a nice. That's a Stone Kettle Station special. I wrote the prep roll. I have no. Okay, I cannot answer very many other questions about Bacon, even though I'm nominally a member of their committee because I'm running their business for their, their Western Con business for those two conventions. Uh, can you tell us where Bacon is? 
There, it is the Santa Clara, California Marriott Hotel in Santa Clara, California. Every year or just next year? Every year. Okay. This year, next year, and barring something catastrophic, the year after that. Okay. The San Jose Hotel in Santa Clara? No. Um, despite the fact that the football team, the American gridiron team called the San Francisco 49ers, plays their games in a stadium in Santa Clara, California. Santa Clara is not that close to San Francisco. It is much closer to San Jose. If you are flying there, we rec uh, they recommend you want to go to uh, San Jose, SJC. Um, it is far easier to get to there, including the fact that you can take light rail to within a block, I think, of the hotel. Yeah. Of the hotel. Um, you can go to the airport. If you fly in and you don't want to, I don't know if they have shuttles, I don't think they do, but if, if you want to go by transit, you can take, take the shuttle bus over to the light rail station, ride light rail around to whatever station it is, and I used to know which one it was. Great American. I think it's the one after Great American. Yeah. But, yeah. I, did, I did it once, I'll never do it again. The important part. If you it. fly into SFOU and you have to take transit, you will have to do a BART Caltrain VTA transfer setup, which will involve probably involve 30 minute headways at some point that you will find right. very unpleasant. That's right, okay. And that's, and that's all on that. Now you, you asked one of the few questions that the resident transit geeks here could do. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing else more about what they're planning. You're gonna to have to contact them. Um, personally, I'm very grateful that they did express this interest in hosting two consecutive conventions. This is not intended to be a permanent matter, though. This is them saying, okay, it looks like we, have a, we can fill the need here. Okay. More questions about well, Western Con Day Con? Yeah, to, to sort of uh, clarify my ignorance, is there anything other than calling themselves slash hosting the convention that having Western Con be contingent with Baycon requires them to do? Hold a Western Con business meeting okay. and conduct the site selection for the two years hence <coughs> Western Con. They are also required to issue name badges and that display the member's name in no less than 24 point bolt type. Yeah. <laughs> and there's I some other stuff in the bylaws. Uh, as the person that they decided to have run their official business, and I did make it clear to them when speaking to them that they were required to choose me. I volunteered to do it, but I do not own Westercon. No, they, Lossus owns Westercon. Lossus owns Westercon. We could fix that. But they get to decide who runs their official business, and they didn't seem to have any problem with me doing it, for which I'm grateful. Do you need me to hold still? Yes. Okay, thank you. Is there any further site selection business? I didn't hear any more. I see more hands. Okay. Let us move on to bylaw amendments. Each of these bylaw amendments is debatable. They re it requires a majority vote, which is to say more yes votes than no votes. Um, the chair intends to ask for a show of hands on each of these, unless, it, unless uh, unanimous consent seems likely. Uh, if there are more yes votes than no votes, the matter is, uh, is ratified and takes effect at the end of this Western Con. Abstentions have no bearing on the result of the vote, and therefore the chair will never ask for abstentions. They don't matter. They have no effect on the result. If you have one yes, no no's, and a hundred abstentions, it still passes. Is there any question about that? Thank you. Okay. Item C1 is a motion to remove, to delete section 1.1 of the Westercon bylaws that removes a traditional but not obligatory statement that Westercon be held over the July 4th weekend. The effect of this is to remove the guidance uh, toward a, a date and Westercon could therefore be held any time during the calendar year. That's the chair's ruling on that, not an actual rule, not an actual written rule, for which they did. Uh, yes, um, 
Mr. Hertz, if you would please stand. Um, my fellow aliens, I point out to you that 1.1 already says but not obligatory. And I therefore suggest that deleting this is a needless and likely to cause more confusion, of which we have plenty. Uh, that is a speech against. Would somebody, is there anybody who wishes to speak for the motion? Uh, oh, the first, per, uh, Ms. Ms. Robinette, if you can stand. I uh, agree with it because there has been confusion. We assumed that we couldn't, for example, have it on Memorial Day once Bacon had moved, just to use an example. And I feel that if we have problems <coughs> in the future, for example, Bacon continues with the July 4th, does not want to have a concurrent convention, that we could choose. There are all, all kinds of good dates. There's President's Day weekend, there's Memorial Day weekend. I would go against Labor Day because of Worldcon, but it's still a good weekend. So uh, I think that this would remove any confusion. That's a speech in favor. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak against the ratification of this motion? Mr. Brown. Jordan Brown. Um, oh, thank you. Yes, please speak, give your name when you, when you stand. I forgot it. As best I can tell, this is the only place in the bylaws that says West Coast Science Fantasy Conference. And it's being removed. That, that seems like a mistake. Well, that is correct, but um, the chair notes that West Coast Science Fantasy Conference has not been a registered service mark of anybody for some years now. If it's deliberate to change the name of the convention, then I'm not going to, the chair will not opine on the, <laughs> on the, whether that's a good idea, but it is not an official name as far as reg registered service marks is concerned. However, mm -hmm. this is a tremendous piece of mm -hmm. If anyone wishes to amend this motion, it would require amending it and then waiting one more year for ratification. A question? Yeah. Is it is it an amendment to make Westercon the official name and then put West Coast Science Fantasy Con yeah. Conference in parentheses? No, this, the, the amendment on the moment floor is to take the whole art, whole section out. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're in the wrong page, Linda. Go to page nine. Well, I went back to one of this one. Uh, yeah, go to page nine. You can see the actual amendment okay. and stuff in red. Never mind. I believe that was a speech against ratifying the proposal. I, yeah, I don't have a problem with the intent of the, mo of the uh, proposal, but it seems like it's doing more than it said it was going to do. That is possible. Um, persons who might want to come up with a better form of it should perhaps word a new, a new amendment, a new, a new bylaw amendment to be considered separately, or to add something, perhaps. Uh, Mr. Sanford. Mr. Chairman, I was about to say pretty much exactly what you just said, that this is a topic worthy of discussion some other time. The official name of the convention is not uh, within the topic we are currently discussing. The, the chair suggests that an appropriate time to discuss this would be in section D, new business. Excellent. And if you could get the door, because we have someone coming in. Get the, uh, the chairs rearranged to make room for people here before we proceed. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not fortunate. It's very long and stuffy, but we need to get a little bit more. Okay. Thank you. All right, we got that settled. Uh, that was a I don't even know what that was. I think we are at a speech in favor of ratification. Does anyone wish to speak? I don't think it was, was it? No, maybe it was. Against. I'm not looking to close the question if there are people who are uh, in, in favor of ratification. If you could stand, state your name for the record. Chuck Mullen Mr. Chairman, 
I believe that removing any reference to a specific date for the convention to be held provides greater flexibility. And considering the current status of WesterCon, which is a little iffy, I think that greater flexibility is greatly to be desired. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else who wants to speak against? Uh, Mr. Yellow. Uh, ben Yellow. Um, I agree with Jordan's uh, point. And yes, we can fix it in new business. On the other hand, as a group, we have a long tradition of screwing up, trying to write bylaws on the fly. I therefore feel that we should not remove this section, uh, since, among other things, no, it, does, it provides absolutely no restrictions on when we can hold WesterCon. We can hold WesterCon anytime we choose. Uh, therefore, I would recommend that, that we not delete this section and somebody for next year when they've had time to think of all the ramifications comes back with an amendment to tweak 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. Is the speech against ramification? Is there anyone who wants to speak for it? Yes. Um, uh, Aaron, Aaron um, it seems that many of the arguments um, against this motion state that the motion doesn't, sorry, against the amendment says that the section 1.1 doesn't do anything anyway, so we may as well keep it. My view is that if some part of the rules don't do anything, there's no reason to keep them. Why do we have rules that are just there to be there? Um, I understand that it's been traditional for Western County to be held over July 4th, but if that's not obligatory, then logically it should, that shouldn't be part of the rules, even as just an aside. You know, we can have tradition listed somewhere else, but I think the rules should be just for things that are obligatory, mandatory, things that we have to do. That's why they are rules. So I would be in favor of striking down the section. We actually ended up starting with a speech against, so I'm that we shouldn't have done that. We should have started with one in favor, so we're off by one. Um, so that, um, that act, that's a, but that speech in favor, therefore, is the even number on these speeches for and against. Yes. All right. Is, are there any other speeches against that would raise new issues that have not yet been discussed? Is I, there? I have a question. Uh, a, the member will, if you can, stand and state your question. I've treated it as, say, a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you. Joni Grill Dashoff. Um, how would you introduce restricting to, say, the months of May, June, and July? OK. Uh, I, Again, you. To, the answer was how would you how would you introduce a restriction? It was a question: is how would you introduce a restriction to limit it to any? I would say any given dates during the year of the WesterCon. The answer is to, to write a new bylaw amendment at new business. Should this pass? That was a neutral item. Any other questions? Is there any reason not to vote at this time? On the question of ratification of item C.1 to delete section 1.1, all those in favor of ratifying this motion, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to ratification, raise your hands. That's actually closer than I thought. Call, it would call be. for. The, uh, in that case, I would like uh, the chair will do a serpentine vote. No, I, I, I can do. No, it, it's not big enough room to necessarily do it. I, if you don't mind holding your hands up, the chair can do a counted vote. Okay. Um, the first, the normal show of hands is uncounted. We'll do a counted vote. All those in favor of ratification, raise your hands, and I'll start in the back. That case is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, hands down. There are ten in favor. Yeah. Those opposed. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hands down. There are ten in the affirmative and six in the negative. This this motion is ratified. 
will take effect at the end of this winter time. Uh, in all cases, I'm the chair meant to start before this, in all cases, uh, any deletions, additions, moves of any sort that require renumbering of sections or cross-references are done by the secretary. There is no need to. Uh, this is not the California Constitution. Those of you who are rules geeks like me know. Are you, all, all of the uh, housekeeping. All the housekeeping is done by the secretary and, uh, and is taken implicitly. Okay. Item C. Dot two is called no zone. It would remove, uh, delete article, or sorry, section 3.2, which refers to the zone restrictions and a regional exclusion zone at 3.03, having to do with where Western cons can be held. This does not affect the, the master boundary, which is anywhere in North America west of 104 degrees west longitude, that's the eastern boundary of New Mexico, or in Hawaii, or if any, or if any very unlikely events ever happened, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Up until this point under the current system, there have been these, the, these zones which restricted where a bid could for file from up until January 1st. And if anybody bid from that zone, or the zone hosting the Western Con was ineligible to succeed itself unless nobody filed any bids by the by <coughs> January 1st, in which case all sites were available. There's also a restriction, and this is, uh, there's a, a distance restriction. Yeah, let me see. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, the regional exclusion. We got rid of that, the, re the, the 60 mile rule a long time ago, I apologize. But the regional exclusion zone at 3.3, that was the rule about it. Nobody files by the end of the year, then everybody's available. April 15th has been, up until now, the point at which all bids had to be filed in order to be on the ballot. The deadline for filing a bid to win the election was the close of site selection. This would basically say you hold WesterCon anywhere in Western North America or Hawaii and the exclusions that were in here go away. You could vote to succeed yourself. Uh, that, that is something I agree. We could have, if this rule were, if the rule were in effect now, then there could have been a bid for Salt Lake City, run by the same group for two years hence. But this takes that, takes that rule out, uh, uh, that, or if this passes. At the moment, there's other restrictions, but this would have, that is the effect. Is there any question about the effect of this rule? Does anyone wish to speak in favor of the ratification of this motion? Okay, Ms. Robinette. <coughs> Linda Robinette, we have not exercised this rule in quite a number of years. I think it was based on we wanted to be able to spread this around the Western United States. Um, not having, for example, Portland twice or something like that. But lately, I have seen only before Lundy only one bid. I believe the Denver bid came in too late for me to action. I think I did vote by mail, but many of the bids I haven't even been able to vote by mail. This is a good example this year. So I think it's just it's just unfortunately with uncontested bids, it's floated into irrelevancy. Before proceeding, the chair reminds members that all of North America west of 104 west is eligible. And well, Alaska. Calgary. Calgary yeah. and Vancouver have hosted Western Cons. Uh -huh. There have never been any in Mexico. Okay. Uh, be, as an honorary Canadian, I know I know this. Is anyone wishing to speak against ratification of this? Is there any, uh, okay. Mr. Hertz? John Hertz. Um, I'm sorry to say that my previous comment about the word obligatory seems to have been disregarded. I will try again. I think that this um, amendment is needless. We already have all the flexibility that we could possibly want. And I think that we should 
uh, vote against ratifying this incredibly stupid amendment. All right. Any further speeches in favor of ratification? Say in favor, Mr. Brown. Um, there is flexibility. Uh, there's the January 1st deadline, but that means that nobody can start can start seriously planning a bid until January 1st, until they know that there's nobody in the right zone to they could just disqualify. Um, so there is a there is a it is a, a real change in the in the things you can do. Um, did that make sense? Any questions about what no. I was saying there? Did the well, no, sorry, were you asked were you meaning to ask the member to yield for a question, Mr. Hertz? Uh, yes. Were you asking the member to yield some of his debate time to ask you ask a question? I'm done talking unless somebody wants me to clarify what I said. That's what I'm dealing with. Is it I'm I'm I uh, take my hand back down. I would right. prefer to speak again. So. Oh, okay. All right, that's a speech in Thank favor. You. Anyone else? I, I, it was unclear whether. That, that's was right. Was I wasn't clear okay. myself. Understood. Okay. Uh, another speech against. Okay. Since there is nobody, since since there's nobody else wants to speak, you get your second and final to, uh, speech against. John Hertz, uh, I respectfully suggest that uh, Mr. Brown's concerns are better dealt with by amending this thing rather than by striking the entire. Any further speeches in uh, favor of ratification? Any further against? Yes. For, all right. What's, what's, what's your first name? Jordan. Jordan, like Jordan, Michael Jordan. Jordan. I went blind for a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, A N, not I I'm going to spell it. All right, there's different ways to spell it. <laughs> yeah. Not really. You can cross reference the attendance sheet. Yeah, I mm -hmm. understand. Good point. Given that there are different ways of spelling my first name, <laughs> not just my last name, but my first name, <laughs> on item C.2, no zone, uh, all those in favor of ratifying C.2, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The affirmative has it. Item C.2 is ratified. That's by a show of hands, uncounted. <laughs> and we go on to page 10. Item C.3, relative filing deadline. There are various deadlines in the bylaws that were hard coded to specific dates. This is, yes, this is one, yes, this is one of several. The next three are all having to deal with hard-coded dates. And the chair is finally going to silence his phone. Thank you, I keep thinking it's mine. <clears throat> Mine's in the other room. <laughs> and encourages everybody else to silence your noise-making devices. The uh, secretary is catching back up to where Secretary's we are. Having computer issues. Okay, I'm done. We're on that. Okay. Relative, we're on C C three relative filing deadline. Uh, this instead of requiring the filing deadline to be on the ballot to be April fifteenth, it is based on sixty days before the first day of the convention. And there's uh, some additional stuff in here about that deals with the unlikely but historically possible case of a WesterCon uh, being postponed, the filing deadline ex gets moved based on that date. Is there any question about the effect of item C.3? I have a procedural question. Yes, Mr. Brown. I, I'm a little, I have Jordan Brown. Um, I'm a little concerned about the, the way that these dates ripple between <coughs> the, the various proposals. Mm -hmm. And so is there a way we can discuss all of them as how they fit together? Um, is there any objection to suspending the rules and uh, considering items C.3, C.4, and C.5 as a group, not necessarily to vote upon them, but to at least discuss the way they ripple among each other? 
Hearing none, the rules are suspended. Did I use the right form? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, I know. He, he's, a better, he's a current parliamentarian than I am. He does it, he does it more often than I do. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, the, the rules are suspended, and we are informally considering items C3, C4, C5. We are not voting upon ratification of them at, uh, at this point. Mr. Brown. Okay. So in C4, it says that you have to send out the ballot 30 days before the, before the first day of the convention. In C5, it, you have to receive the ballot, the, the ballot back from the member by 10 days before the convention. That allows 20 days turnaround between mailing it out. If everybody does everything promptly, 20 days turnaround between mailing it out and getting it back. That's probably enough. I don't know about Canada Post, but, uh, but US Post at least. That's probably enough. You can probably count for on a week each way. But it's not lots of spare time. And if that were to be extended in some fashion, that would then probably ripple over into the 60 day that we're, thing we're talking about now. Um, and so it seems like the schedules got tighter and they, and they might be a little too tight. Um, next over here. On the other, uh, Aaron Kenton. On the other hand, it says can be sent out by either postal or electronic mail. Email is instantaneous, and so if we're if that's an option, I think three weeks should be plenty of time for people, especially because you know we're voting on a site selection. We're not doing anything more complicated than that. So it shouldn't take three weeks for someone to decide how much the convention needs to be or should be. The chair is not going for or against here. This is an informal discussion. Right. Uh, yeah, actually, I think you had your hand up yeah. first. Um, Ms. Parker. I was pointing out that the deadline mentioned here says at least. The convention can take into account that delays more extensive than 30 days yes. than it did on earlier. <laughs> OK, now the chair can address that one. This is correct. The, it is not must, it is at least. Uh, a convention could choose could choose to go to fix, uh, allow ballots up until any point until the final end, of it, even if they went and checked at their mailbox the day of the convention. Uh, let's see who's next here. Uh, yeah, somebody who hasn't said anything yet, Ms. Hayes. Lisa Hayes, I'm going to say no matter how wrong or right it is, it's irrelevant at this point. Let's go forward with whatever we have, and then figure out what we're making a mistake. We can't be perfect every time, because we never are. All right, who else wants to talk on this? So, all right, what's wrong with that? Good, Rob, Ned. I think it's, I'm stuck in my ways, and I knew that April 15th, either January 1st or April, then April 15th is the date. So that's kind of embedded in my, in my brain. And I got so confused because, of course, Worldcon, and we'll use that as an example, had been shifted from um, its normal date in August or September to a, a further date in October, and that shifted everything off. And sometimes I'm sitting here going, when is this thing actually happening? I, mean, I, I think I asked a, recently the Glasgow Con about when would I see the um, proposed amendments for this, and they said it was 60 days before the con or 30 days or whatever they gave me, and I wasn't going to take out a Julian counter calendar and start counting that back. So I'm just advocating to keep it first in April 15th. I do understand that, that if you have a uh, contested bid, it doesn't, it, the, some people may um, not have time to do um, their due diligence in knowing whether they can do the bid. I do understand there are problems with the dates right now. Mr. Yallo. Uh, ben Yallo. Um, once we allow WesterCon to move off July 4th, which we have already said we are doing, then if the dates are locked in, you get into real trouble. Uh, we absolutely have to tie it into the dates when WesterCon is going to be. Because, for example, let's assume WesterCon 
it's from, I believe somebody mentioned President's Day yeah. weekend is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do on this President's Day weekend. We don't have the ballots out yet under the existing <laughs> <laughs> uh, We don't have anything there. We have to be able to move if we're if we're going to allow Western Con to move off July 4th, we've got to make it be a big relative or else it gets really ugly. <laughs> Good point. Anybody else, does anybody else want to substantively yeah. ask questions or just uh, discuss this matter? Yes? Uh, one more thing. I, I noticed that the 3.4 is apparently the only part of these rules that explicitly authorized email. Given that some of the issues are posed, I would suggest that's a very good idea that we have something we're saying that else can send out by email, like as I mentioned before. New business. Right? New business. It is yeah. new business and might be better to consider as new business, or perhaps the member. Uh, the, the chair suggests that should these be ratified this year, some of these suggestions might even be do us do little harm to be considered for a while and submitted to next year's business meeting. We have been getting by with, I mean, I'm trying not to debate the substance, of course, but we've been getting by with this for 30 years. I know the world has changed, but if you've got some improvements of that sort, it'd be better. Let's try perhaps. Well, next I, year. I was just noting that in the, in 3.4, C3, 3 or sorry, C4, it does set, it does authorize email. And so that I think is, that is true. But so I think it's important that we kind of keep that in mind. Is that is true, yes. Is there any further informal discussion? Okay, we are now out of informal discussion. The chair suggests that, to, in the chair's opinion, logically these three items really have to be considered all at once. Okay. Is there, let me ask, the chair suggests, the chair asks, is there any objection to considering items, where are they, C, they're C, what are they numbers? C3, C4, and five, right? Item C3, C4, and C5 as a unit to be voted upon at one time. Is there any objection? One person can stop this if they don't like it. Hearing none, the rules are suspended. The items are combined as a single item. For well, yes, for the yeah. that, yeah. Therefore, we actually at this point, having come out of informal consideration, is there anyone who wishes to debate? the ratification of C3, 4, and 5. I have a, que I have a question about the interpretation. A question. Parliamentary inquiry then. Well, uh, whether it's parliamentary or interpretation. Shall be sent by postal or electronic mail. Does that authorize the committee to use only one or the other of those? Can you move this then? No, it's this one. Could a, com could a committee say, we're sending the ballot by electronic mail, and if you don't have an email address, you didn't give us one, or it's stale, too bad for you? But te technically, technically, and means both, and or means one or the other. The chair believes that the lot that the that the most equitable way to consider it is that the this that, that either would either would work, and and is not an unreasonable also reading of it. And furthermore, that it is incumbent upon committees to use their best efforts to contact their members, even if they do not have electronic mail addresses. Thank you. I concur. It was just not clear in the, from the wording to me. I'm aware of what you're saying on the terms of technical logic. But even people who have email sometimes do not give it. Westercons, all conventions, but we're talking Westercons here. Westercons are, have a responsibility to contact their members even if it's not that convenient. The chair will say, however, having chaired a Westercon, the chair believes if a member chooses not to give any form of contact, which has happened. Electronic or postal or any or, or anything else, that convent the Western Common question is not responsible for this. Members do have the right to be ignored. <laughs> there is a cost to being ignored, and this would be one of them. All right. Uh, 
is Robin Ash. What I, what I have found is some conventions, not all, but most, will actually present the ballot on the website. So if for some reason you got skipped in the mail, or you're in a rush, or you got skipped in your email, or again, you're in a rush, you find this thing on the website, print it out, and send it in. That's what I've done many times. You'll see, sometimes I believe one of the few people that's actually used U.S. mail to send these things in. Uh, anyone else wants to debate in some way the ratification of C-345? Hearing none, let us move forward on this. A, a majority vote being necessary to ratify as a unit item C-3, C-4, and C-5. Uh, Ms. Hayes? Technical point, please call the vote slowly so I can pan without making people sick. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a question of privilege affecting the assembly and the members watching in the video. <laughs> <laughs> On the matter of ratifying items C3, C4, and C5 as a unit, a majority being necessary to ratify. All those in favor of ratifying these three items, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to ratification, raise your hands. Hands down. Without objection, as it turns out, items, these three items are ratified and take effect on the convention. At the end of this convention. Put it in my own notes as well. <clears throat> that completes all ratifications. We are now at new business. Is there anyone who wishes to introduce new business to the business meeting at this time? Uh, uh, who first? Uh, Mr. Hertz, do you think? I, think I, uh, um, I move that all the people who could not manage the word obligatory, as previously shown by the vote, should be inflicted all over with thousands of tiny paper cuts, <laughs> dumped in lemon juice, and rolled in rock salt. Let me finish. I, I, I have first right on this. Uh, while the chair recognizes the sentiment it opposed to the member, the chair rules the motion is dilatory. <laughs> Ms. Nadra. I don't know whether it's one or three, but I would like to propose that the consideration of time for Westercon be the months of May, June, and July, which appear to be its traditional uses. And for uh, anyway, does the mem uh, it, 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 I I would interpret this to, as a motion to reinstate as Section 1.1 a motion that would read that it is traditional but not obligatory that the West Coast Science Fantasy Conference, WesterCon, shall take place in the months of May, May June, June, or, or July. July. I second that motion. And or July. And or, well, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's right. Obviously, the um, friendly amendments are all accepted. Well, and had, the motion's not before the meeting yet. Right, Is but it, <laughs> I, I am second. not. It was seconded. I, I, I heard several second. seconds. Exclusive. The chair wishes to remind members that there is no such thing as a friendly amendment. Mm -hmm. No, there is no such thing. However, the member for the before the member's motion reached the chair the floor, you are you can you can suggest changes and the maker can make them. Okay, let, me, let, let us get the wording down up here before we consider. Well, this was a good thing to start with. Yes. Did you add back in the name of the convention? Yes, add back in. I was going to ask for this fantasy. A, I already read it that way. He did indeed. Mm -hmm. The chair believes the motion before us is to add a new section in place of what had been 1.1 that says 1.1, name and date. It is traditional, but not obligatory, that the West Coast Science Fantasy Conference. I would, I would like to suggest that we make it Westicon and then parentheses West Coast Science Fiction Conference. Oh, sure. Okay. Depends on what's the actual name. 
in, 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 uh, reversing the order, okay, that the Westercon, it would then read Westercon parentheses West Coast Science Fantasy Conference. Science fiction and fantasy? No, it's no, it just says science fiction. Science fiction. This is reinstating yeah. all the old words. Oh, sorry, I did not realize that was Bruce's word. Yes. The, the, uh, you have a piece of paper, do you not? In it, share. Okay. We're sharing. Have a look at have a look yeah, at the existing. Yeah, exactly. You have no problem. Does the member has no problem with that? No, okay. I just wanted the months, and you right. told me it had to come up as new business. I appreciate it. You're right. So, the 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 word the motion is reworded now to read uh, one point one to add one point one name and date. It is traditional, but not obligatory, that the Westercon, parentheses, West Coast Science Fantasy Conference, parentheses, shall take place, can I get it? No, in the months of May, June, and, or, uh, or July. I wrote and, jeez. I know we have no projection. Is there anybody who is confused about what the motion is? Uh, and yeah, and I believe the seconder agreed to the alterations we made as well. Uh, Ms. Hayes, you were the next one had it with a hand up. When you were reading that, I did not, by mistake, did you hear the word obligatory? Was that in that? But not obligatory. The, not obligatory. the chair will now read the motion again. Please pay attention. Honestly, there's only 20 of you in here. Uh, <laughs> 1. 1.1 name and date. It is traditional, comma, but not obligatory, that the Westercon, parentheses, West Coast Science Fantasy Conference, parentheses, close, shall take place in the months of May, comma, June, comma, or July. And or. Okay, and or. I, yeah, that, all right, fine, and or July, okay. Fine. And you could span, span a boundary, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's all right. Sorry. Okay. Forgot that is the that. current wording. Is there before I add this? Is there anybody who's confused about the current wording? I can say you have a three-month convention. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no. I don't think I have for that. Uh, uh, Sam, Mr. Stan, Sanford. Mr. Chair, my question: Should this be the Westercon? We don't normally say the Westercon. That's correct. Moving the into the parentheses might make the sentence flow better. Uh, number one, I have one point seven. I mean, a section one point seven. The service mark is Westercon, not the no. Westercon. That Westercon, the Westercon, etc. I believe Mr. Sanford is correct. Well, in fact, um, the way it was written, the way it's written before, with a lowercase t in the before the, in the older wording, it was the, the word the was never part of the official name anyway. As opposed to the. Okay, but that's okay. I got it. I got it is here. All right. The chair. The chair doesn't think that it was substantive matter. All right. That's fine. I agree. <laughs> You like, okay. But you are talking but to if, a more protection if, committee member. That, 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 so. Okay. <laughs> and the chair also notes that the long form, the, the now the the the, the obligatory, I'm sorry, the parenthetical mm -hmm. phrase mm -hmm. portion, that service mark has been a, appears to have been abandoned by its owner. It is out there. In, you know, in that what we appear to be doing is something similar to what happened when we reversed the order of the Wuspus marks on Hugo Award. And we changed the official name of the Hugo Award to the Hugo Award. <laughs> it used to be called the Science Fiction Achievement Award. Oh. Uh, Mr. Dashoff. Uh, Todd Dashoff, I would like to make a motion to amend the uh, new business on the floor, uh -huh. specifically to replace the word traditional, first, firstly, to replace the word traditional with suggested, and then secondly, to add the month of August to the end of the proposed oh. dates. The reason for that being oh, that okay. you are now waiting yourself to the front of the year, and just I think you should give some people a chance if they can't do it in late spring, early summer, to have August. Okay. And I object strongly to the fact that the you're saying it's traditional because you haven't ever done it 
It may or not. The chair suggests that it be better to do them one at a time. And Fine. First undertake. Happy, happy to. To strike out traditional and insert. I will say suggested. Yes. I can, Is there a second to that motion to strike out traditional and insert? I hear others oh, one second. Um, I believe I've, that was a, you made a debate in favor of. Yeah. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the motion to strike out traditional and insert suggested? Uh, question? This yes. Is, this is a motion to amend the motion on the floor. Correct. Right. Okay. This so, does so not we, ratify the motion. This right. is a first order amendment right. to amend the proposal on the floor. It's just changing the wording. The chair will make it very clear when we are going to be voting on what's going to be added to the bylaws as a, if it gets ratified next year. This is nearly wordsmithing, and this is perhaps the reason why Mr. Yellow was so leery about the whole thing. <laughs> Understood, but I believe we were stating something that was not true. The, okay. the question currently before the meeting is to amend the proposed bylaw change by striking out the word traditional and inserting suggested. The question is only on striking out traditional and inserting suggested. Is there anyone else who wishes to debate this? discuss this. All those in favor, is there any objection to it, to do striking out traditional and inserting suggested? I was just trying to... I, did, 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 I, okay, I just heard an objection. Thank you, Joan. You, make, you require me to take a vote. Take a vote. All those in favor of striking out... The, the chair, this is an object lesson to members. When the chair asks, are there any objections, the way that the members tell us that you have no objections <laughs> is to say <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Which I this, did the other times. This is, you now know. <laughs> okay, I, was, I, I will withdraw my snarkiness at that point and say, is there any objection to striking out traditional and inserting suggested? Yes. Yes, fair enough. All those in favor of striking out traditional and inserting suggested, raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed? Hands down. Uh, by a show of hands, traditional is struck out and suggested. The motion now reads to add a section to the bylaws, 1.1, name and date. It is suggested, but not obligatory, that Westercon, parentheses, the West Coast Science Fantasy Conference, although the T is uh, lower, the, and the is lowercase. Correct. Shall take place in the months of May, June, and or July. That's the motion on the floor. Like the and or. Hmm? What? It, in, someone point out in case it straddles. A month boundary. You, oh, could yeah. cause a, you could cause an impossibility, oh, uh, a, a very unwanted impossibility. I see. All right. Uh, Mr. Dashoff, I believe you wish to amend that by changing the, 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 date, the date range to be May, June, July, and or August? The chair is correct. Thank you. It, Give me a second. The secretary needs to catch up. Take the time she needs. We don't have to, we just might. No, uh, we need someone to consult a different constitution. That's the discussion. Yeah, wait for her to open discussion. Let her get her on the floor first. Are she working? Is she doing it? Yeah. All right. You got it? I got it. All right. Uh, is there anyone who wishes? Is there anyone who wishes? I, I thought I saw a second out there when we, after you said it to add August to that group. Didn't I see a second? I'll second it. Oh, okay, I hear there's one up here. Okay. So, yes. The deputy had, was, was catching me on something, but I, I sometimes miss stuff up here. I don't claim perfection, trust me. Uh, the question is only on changing the wording of the proposal to change the dates to May, June, July, and or August. Is there anyone who wishes to discuss that? Do I, I, do I have time? You get first. Okay. Yes, Mr. Dashoff. Thank you. Um, the only reason I have for making this uh, suggestion is, as Ms. Dashoff, or Brill Dashoff, <laughs> has proposed, uh, it was waiting towards the, yeah, thank you, put the hand down. Uh, it was waiting towards the front of the calendar, 
and I could see people who might not have the ability to do it in July, I would give them one. Since it has been traditional in July, I would try to keep at least the range as even as possible. I'm not going to go into September because that clearly bodes against uh, bidding in conflict with Worldcon. But I think we might be safe with August. Okay, speech against, and the substance debate has to be only on the difference between the three months and the adding of August. If you're going to go out of scope, the chair will stop you. Ms. Hayes. <clears throat> if I'm interpreting our current proposal, it is only the word suggestive. Therefore, I can hold my Westercon or propose a Westercon from January to December. The chair says yes to that. It is Therefore, yes. I do not want the suggestive in August to confuse anyone with a conflict with Worldcon unless, and the rule allows this, that you're trying to combine them, which case that's not a problem. I can still hold it in August if I want to. It's just we don't want the phrase to sort of suggest it. So I am opposed to the words adding this to our suggestion. You're not stopping me from doing so. Yes, that is in scope again on a speech against the proposal change. And the chair reiterates that regardless of what words are adopted here, you could hold a Westercon in January or December, if you wish. The chair does say you would have to hold it in the year for which you bid it. Yeah. I want that in the record. Um, it isn't explicit, but it should be. She wants to get parliamentary inquiry okay. when you get a chance. Okay, I will, I will take, unless it's an inquiry. It is an inquiry. Uh, you both put your hands up at the same time, so once you come. Yes. He must have spoken. Yet. That's why I'm going to, well, that was the question, is I'll take inquiries in front of debate, but if they're both of the same rank, I'm going to take the first one. Okay. You'll be next. Mr. Wilmot. Point of clarification, should the convention start on December 31st and end uh, on January? Are you really no, so we, we, are at, we are beyond the scope because you're questioning my ruling. You're, it's an inquiry about my ruling, which I really should have made at a different point in the debate. The chair withdraws it. Well, I'm going to do it later, okay? We are actually only talking about the date, the, date, the, the, August. the, the August thing, and we'll come back to it, okay? Mr. Dasher? Well, Mr. Wilmoth basically anticipated my question, so I'll make it on a slightly different version. Should this pass, and the con begins, because of the way the calendar breaks, on April 30th, and, con and continues over a weekend, how does the chair rule? I understand it's suggested, not, but for just for my own edification, how would the chair rule as to what month that takes place in? The uh, question is on what would happen to a Westercon under this wording if the, no matter which, if the amendment is adopted yes. or the main proposal, uh, that happened where it's dates bridged into or out of this range of dates. The answer is the wording says suggested, not obligatory, and therefore it's just a suggestion and a convention committee could choose what they wanted to. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. We are at, I believe, against adding the August wording to the. It's a great point of We are for. Uh, they said the last substantive speech, and that was against. That was against. Oh, we have a four in four. In fact, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a con. A speech in favor of that, unless it's something not a speech in favor or against. If you just want to talk about it, is it a query about the word? Queer. And the query. Changing constitutions. Is there a requirement of range for dates for world time? No. See, my uh, the chair will not discuss this, okay. and you're raising a question that I'm not that I'm not going to ask on. I'm not going to talk about. It. And the okay. answer, the answer, the short answer is no. Okay, but I mean, but I, it, it isn't as really whispers, relevant. That's as, what, as parliamentarian yeah. of the wish That was why I had suggested August. And this Dasha, 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 please refrain. The, t the head table is trying to answer your question. Right. Thank you. That was enough. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes, Mr. Pine. Yeah, I just wanted to note that that is properly meant for the Oysters Business Group. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to turn. Is it business. relevant to this meeting? Honestly, mm -hmm. um, I know you think it is, but the chair rules it's irrelevant. Okay. We said suggested, so 
it changes okay. everything. Let's, let's get back to on track. Where was I? This is speech. in favor it's of adding speech. August. It's appropriate businesses are speaking in favor. Who wishes to speak in favor of adding August to the suggested date range? Does anybody else want to speak against adding August to the date Okay, Ms. Ms. Robinette. Linda Robinette, I am speaking on behalf of Bubonic Con, which is another general interest con held in New Mexico. It attempts to avoid, the state is based on the attempts to avoid uh, counteracting with Worldcon. This would add a possible, I realize it says suggested, a possible other convention for Bubonic Con to try to avoid. Though they could hold them in concert, but that's up to uh, next would be, that was against, so I want a speech in favor of adding August. Mr. Yalla. I'll move the previous question. Is there a second, second. to the motion second. to close debate? Second. Is there a standing rule? Yes, standing, 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 rule. standing rule one, thank you. Uh, without this being a question to re recognize someone for the purposes of the debate, are there any other persons who wish to debate the question? By show of hands. There are none. Is there any objection to ending the debate and voting solely on the adding August to the date range? Seeing none, the question is on adding August to the date range by changing the wording at the end through to say May, comma June, comma July, and or August. Correct. All those in favor of adding August to the date range, raise your hands. All those opposed, raise your hands. More than that. Uh, the motion fails, and August is not added to the date range. We are now back at the base wording of the motion, which now reads one, at 1.1 name and date. It is suggested, but not obligatory, that Westercon, parentheses, lowercase the, West Coast Science Fantasy Conference, close paren, shall take place in the months of May, comma, June, comma, and or July. Do I have that correct the way you think it is? I'm going to make sure I'm reading back what the secretary has as well. Because it's reading from my computer. I know, but it's easy. I can't see your computer from with these, with these glasses. It's all right. I'm not going to poke my head over there every time I do it. All right, we're, we're, we're wasting time. All right, now the chair will get to the point where, based on a question earlier, the chair rules that it is implicit that WesterCon is in the calendar year for which it is being bid. Right. Uh, that is, you, you can't hold it before January 1st or after December 31st. Nobody in their right mind. Uh, no, no, no. The advisability of it is a different matter. I'm dealing with only the technicality of it. Not the question that was asked, but thank you. I believe where I was, I thought that where I was trying to go with it. And once again, it is traditional but not obligatory. Uh, the general purpose of this ruling is that, um, let us say, hypothetically, that if you want a bid to hold the convention in July, and for whatever reason you lost your facilities and had to move your dates, you cannot move it to the following July of the next of the next year. You could go out of business. You could do, you, you, you could do a, fa a committee failure, but you cannot hold your WesterCon outside of the year for which you bid it. Deputy Chair would observe that this what you described happened a couple years ago for a WesterCon. Uh, the town of Pachuca. That was different. Well, the chair is, it is correct. The, the postponement of the conventions was, and, and, the, and that what happened is the owner of the service mark overrode the bylaws. That's why. A moment. Yes. It is implicit, yes. It is at least possible that that waspus could pull the plug on the whole thing. They do own it. They don't wish to do much more. I know they don't, but they, they do own it. And th this is a chair's ruling. It is not binding in that respect, but it should be. You know. And yes, 
the chair is perfectly aware of the irony of it being visited <laughs> upon that him making a ruling that is, could be visited upon the convention that he chaired. <laughs> Yeah. and suggest there's a reason why the two conventions in question consulted with Lossus before they did anything. <laughs> All right. Can we call the question? Um, I, I want to make sure, we never actually got an yeah, actual piece of, the, the parliamentarian, or the, the deputy chair reminds me, yes, right? Yes. We never got a speech in favor of the base proposal <laughs> from Ms. Dashoff. You have, oh. a, you have a right to vote to speak in favor, if you wish, yeah. of the of the, Does that of the whole, or against automatically. I will ask for it against after that. But. Well, I'll still do it for. Yeah. Um, being the chair of Bosco <laughs> over President's Day weekend, and knowing the changing of dates for Westercon <coughs> and Aikon, I thought the window of the three months would be something to aim for and leave off uh, reaching into other well-settled conventions. Uh, time frame. Bravo. Is there a, I, I need one. I don't need one, but I need to give the opportunity for at least one. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the adoption of the amendment of the proposed constitutional proposal? Uh, your hand was up first. Jerry Lohr. Uh, I think the proposal is unnecessary and inappropriate. It isn't a rule. It doesn't belong in the bylaws. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of adoption? Anyone else wants to speak against? I, I was going to no, say the same fine. thing. Though, uh, if I might give a concern, but if you're in May, um, you're starting to interfere with school. I'm no longer a, a, a school-age yeah. parent, but Don't. it would have been a serious problem for us if if uh, stuff was if restaurants were in May. The chair observes, as small as this group is, this is not just a round table, a bunch of people standing around a table talking. So we give everyone one time. Of the day. Now, if there's nobody else who wants to speak in favor of ratification, you do get one more speech if you want it, Ms. Dadro. Um, I think you need a definition of motive in the Constitution, if you do not have one item number one in the Constitution, nowhere are you stating this is a Western cup and why we're doing the rest. Well, that's two separate sentences. It could this be. One is. Uh, no, 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 it no, is, no, 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 it's only no, a suggestion, a guideline. Yeah. The ruling of the chair has already been, it should be in the calendar Wait, year. Order. Thank you. Uh, the member will state their point of order. Uh, well, because the, the debate wasn't addressed to the question at hand? Yes, that's true. Yeah, we had said I, the months. Yeah, the, the, well, no, I, I will say the, the, chair the, the, chair, yeah, the chair rules the, the, the point of order not well taken because it did it also put in the name and such that was part of that function. Mm -hmm. But well, I don't think it matters that much because we are almost to the point where we can vote on this. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> we have to close. Call the question. Yes, I believe that was already I'm giving the secretary a shot here. The deputy chair would note that calling the question, nobody else, that nobody's trying to actually doesn't really accomplish. That was thinking to my chest, but it was too loud. Sorry, Martin. Well, you want? Are you wanting to split this into two things? Yes, uh, the secretary, Ms. Dinneroff, has moved, we'll, I'm going to state the question, and we'll see if anybody seconds it, to uh, divide this, uh, it's an amendment in a section, it's actually dividing section 1.1 into two sections. <coughs> two sentences. Yes, that's a good point, into two sentences, okay. The, the name of the, the, them, and this is actually okay, it's, a, it's an amendment to replace the whole thing with name and date. Sentence number one is, the name of the convention, the name of this, yeah, the name of this convention is Westercon, parentheses, West Coast Science Fantasy uh, Conference, period. Uh, I, I it's sorry, the, it's, it's, it's there, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It, uh, the name of this convention is Westercon, 
parenthesis, the West Coast Science Fantasy Conference, close paren, period. That is the first sentence of the revision. The second sentence is, it is suggested, but not obligatory, that the convention shall take place in the months of May, comma, June, comma, and, and slash or July, period. Is that a motion? That, that is a motion to I'll replace it, it, it with, a new, with the new wording. Okay, second there's a second. Um, has Demirov, you, is, you know, are these points of order or just parliamentary question? Yeah. Are we voting this as a combined it would be item two. or each piece separately? Uh, it's a combined motion to replace the motion on the floor. That's what I want to thank you. It, it would replace this proposed new section 1.1 1 .1, that is one sentence with two sentences punctuated the way the chair just read. And it has been seconded. Ms. Denneroff, you are the maker of the motion and get to make the first speech in favor. I think part of the problem here is that regardless of when the convention takes place, we need to know the name of the convention. The, the name of this section is name and date. They're two separate thoughts. So the first part is the name of the convention is, the second part is the convention shall take place whenever. And I think they need, they're two separate thoughts, two separate actions, and I think they need to be broken into two separate sentences. Okay. Anyone want to speak against replacing this with the two sentence version of it? Anyone else want to speak in favor, raising some other point other than what was <laughs> just raised? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Jerry Lord, I, I I think this may not actually be a point. In, I'm confused. Make your statement, and we'll work. I I I I believe that the section to do the name is a good idea, but the section to worry about the dates at all isn't, it doesn't belong there. All right, the, the question before the meeting is whether it's a good idea to break it into two sentences or not. So it's a, uh, but, but whereas stri striking the second sentence would be a separate question. Okay. It is, honestly. Right, right, mm -hmm. okay. Ms. Hayes. I hate to agree with him completely. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking it into the two sentences, one should be 1.1 and the other one should one be 1.101 or whatever the next section is. They're separate issues. Is there any objection to instructing the secretary? Should this pass to fix the numbering so we don't have to renumber the entire article? I don't hear any objection to that. So you can have it as two. It would be 1.1. It would Just be 1.1.1 1. 1. 1. and 1.1.2. 1. 1. 1. Okay. So the first part would be name and the second part? The second would sentence be would be the date range, but it is, uh, the numbering within the section is not substantive. It's, it's, it's a, just that a was just housekeeping. clarification. So the question before us is, shall we break it into two sentences as we read? Any else, anybody else want to discuss it? This does not pass the proposal. It just changes the whole wording, and we'll bring, and we'll come back to that. Is there any objection? Okay, the motion is now, okay, the proposal is now broken up into two sentences and separately by informally it's going to be numbered as, it will end up being numbered 111 and 112. And the new wording is now, name and date. This is for, this is for action. Okay. The name of, uh, I believe it's, the name of this convention, not the, the convention, or is it? Well, it doesn't sure. matter, I will change it to this. The name of this convention is WesterCon, parentheses, lowercase the, West Coast Science Fantasy Conference, close parent, period. The second subsection will be, it is suggested, but not obligatory, that WesterCon take place over May, comma, June, comma, and or July. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Shall take place in the months of. Dang it. In the during months. During the months of? During the months of. Okay. During it. We'll fix that. You're right. It, 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 would, it has the same effect. And, you know. It's clear. Okay. Well, it also. The second sentence, which will uh, have a new <laughs> sentence. Uh, it is suggested, comma, but not a <laughs> Quiet. 
It is suggested, but not obligatory, that Westercon take place during the months of May, comma, June, comma, and slash or July period. That is the second sentence. Is there anyone who is unclear on what the proposal before the meeting is? That's a serious question, okay. All right. Now we are at last, finally getting close to the bottom of this. The question is on whether we should adopt this as a constitute as a bylaw amendment. Uh, where were we in the well? I think we need to start over at four because we changed some of the substance of it. I think along the way. Is a motion to divide in order? To vote the, the to, to divide adopt. The they could dividing the amendment. Right? Yeah. The amendment. Yeah. Well, since you have two numbers, it would be a motion to divide past the one and past the other separately. We could do that. Um, I would like so moved. I think so so moved. I think it would help. It's going to the voting. The I chair was... sex fix because they are the way they're now worded, they are different enough from each other that I agree. But have we actually adopted the substitute? We did it up. Uh, no, we didn't. I have oh, been reminded that we have. I thought I, I was wondering if you skipped this step. Is there any objection to adopting the substitute wording of two sentences? And then we can take up whether we buy it. Was there any objection to it? I thought I called it. No, you, you, you called it. I did. Yeah. He, you, yeah, you, you called it. I was busy yeah. prepping yeah. for one All right. We have adopted the substitute two sentence wording. Um, the chair at the the chair rules that because the two sentences can be considered sufficiently different from each other, that they are separate quite issues, that the, the request of only one person was necessary to divide them. You know that one? Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's what I was going to suggest. To that's what I'm doing. We therefore have two proposals before us that we'll have to take up one at a time. Um, the first of these two main motions and when the secretary is ready, I will go. I will move forward. I'm ready. The first of these two proposals is to add a new section um, that adds a sentence. We'll deal with the numbering. The secretary can deal with the numbering. That the name of this convention is <coughs> WesterCon. Parentheses, lowercase the West Coast Science Fantasy Conference. Close paren. Period. And that's all. Is there any objection to, to adopting this? Wait, when adopting this? To or adopting this as a bylaw amendment, or do we need one want to debate the question of adding this sentence? Is there any objection to a, giving first passage to this adding this one sentence? Hearing none, that is given first passage and will be sent on for ratification to next year's WesterCon. But he's chairing their business meeting, so we can see <laughs> The next question for us. This is 76. Me too. I've been doing it all, all month. Okay. Um, the uh, next question is on adding another subsection. They will both be grouped together in the same general section, but then. Number the number is, is, is the secretary's discretion. That um, this is a new sentence that that it is suggested, but not obligatory, that WesterCon shall take place in the months of May, comma June, comma and or July uh, during 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 the months. Of, yeah, she's got the better wording. Right? During the Thank it you. is suggested but not obligatory that Westercon take place during the months of May, comma, June, comma, and or July. That question is a new question upon the floor. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of it? Mr. Yallow. Uh, ben Yallow. Um, I realize this is not binding. Uh, we have other non-binding things in our bylaws, such as the suggestion that the guests of honor come from the West Coast region, things like that. Uh, the idea is to encapsulate the knowledge that we have into the bylaws, but leave it as a suggested, not obligatory, but it's important to know what the general idea should be. 
and recognize it. There will be times when, whoops, uh, can't do it. Okay, not obligatory. So I believe that we want that guidance in there. Yeah, speech against. You can you can speak against adding that sentence. This is because it's a new question. <sighs> okay, Jerry Lord. There are ways of putting non-obligatory rules in or a rule a means to buy, to violate your own rules into your rules. And that's the appropriate way to handle knowledge that you want to carry forward as part of the of the, the founding document, but not make it impossible for somebody to do it differently because they have to because of conditions. But suggestions and so forth are rules. They don't belong there. That's speech against. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of the proposal bringing up new topics? Anyway. Yes, Mr. Dashoff. Uh, I'm not completely sure it's a new topic. But given that the uh, bylaws of Westercon managed to contain a similar provision for learning years, <laughs> I don't see any harm in modifying the language and putting back a similar provision. Speech against? Any speeches at all? Very well, we will vote on this. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I, although I know you could read it, I'm going to follow section article 4.1 and say, and if you hold it up, I'll read the actual word here. This is to add a new sentence. It is, accept, it is suggested, comma, but not obligatory, comma, that Westercon take place during the months of May, comma, June, comma, and or July, period. All those in, uh, all those in favor of adopting this as a bylaw amendment that, that would require it to be passed the next year for ratification, please raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to adding it, hands down. The affirmative has it. The motion is given first passage and will be passed to Westercon 77 for ratification. Does, uh, getting, the chair believes that we have reached the end of new business. Am I, are you planning to surprise the chair? <laughs> the chair also acknowledges Mr. Yellow and agrees with him on the substance of his complaint about doing what we just did, <laughs> but also is grateful, I guess, to the programming de department of Westercon 76 for giving us a two-hour block. Unfortunately, there is a principle that appears to say that business expands to fill available yes. time. Before we move to adjournment, are there any things that are related to Westercon business meeting that our people wish to make announcements about? Hearing none, is there any objection to adjourning at this time? Hearing none, the business meeting of the 76th West Coast Science Fantasy Conference is adjourned, CMDA, at 1236. Thank you. Thank you.